note that the presentations will be ma made available to you on the intranet uh, if you wish to share them and if you need uh, them as you move forward. So we will do our best to make all of the presentations in today's technical briefing session available on the intranet. So the first um, speaker for the uh, highly hazardous pesticides is Ms. Mariel Watts from the Pesticide Action Network and also representing the International POPs Elimination Network. So I would just call Mariel up to uh, open the session today. Uh, thank you very much, Brenda, and good afternoon to everybody. Um, this session is following on from the very great level of interest that was shown in HHPs at the ICCM3 and also at the regional meetings as we've heard in the last presentation. And I want to just very briefly run us through um, the, some of the human health impacts of pesticides, the environmental impacts, the costs of inaction, which we've just been talking about, and the uh, alternatives that are available, together making an, uh, a case for concerted action on HHPs. After about 60 years of pesticide use, we still actually have no real idea of the level of poisoning or adverse effects on humans from pesticides. Um, right, the first attempt to, to come up with an estimate was in 1990 when there was a paper published in the World Health Bulletin, and that came up with an estimate of around 25 million cases of acute poisonings from occupational exposures to pesticides every year. Uh, there's been numerous estimates since. None of them are based on any real data or any real knowledge of the level of, of adverse effects. But there have been a number of surveys carried out in recent years that indicate that we still have got a major problem. Even if it's less than the 25 million that we had in 1990, or perhaps it's more, we really don't know. But a small survey in Brazil in 2012 found that 44.8% of workers involved in vegetable production reported health effects whilst using pesticides. And in Pakistan, in 2012, 100% of women of female cotton pickers who were picking cotton between three and 15 days after it had been sprayed were reporting adverse health effects. And in Burkina Faso in 2013, 82.66% of farmers surveyed reported at least one ailment during or just after spraying. That's a fairly substantial level of occupational adverse effects from, from pesticides. But these surveys are really only reflecting acute poisoning. Um, and they have, and there is even less idea of the real extent of chronic effects from pesticide use. Numerous epidemiological studies have found associations between a pesticide exposure and cancer, birth defects, reproductive failures, developmental problems in children, and neurological problems in adults, such as Parkinson's disease. Going back again to the, two, the 1990 study I already mentioned, there was an estimate of 735,000 cases of chronic effects such as cancer annually from exposure to pesticide. But this is an estimate. We really have no idea of the level of, of adverse effects. And lastly, according to a recently published WHO report just this year, pesticides account for about one third of global suicide deaths of the 800,000 deaths worldwide, making it the single most common cause of suicide, a very preventable cause. The fatality rate from pesticide ingestion is high, and banning HHPs in some countries has been very successful in bringing down that suicide rate. In Sri Lanka, for example, the banning of monoprotophos, methylparathion, methamidophos, and endosulfin resulted in a 50% fall in suicide rate without reducing agricultural output at all. One of the important determinants of health effects from pesticide exposure is what we commonly refer to as conditions of use. Numerous surveys and studies have found that the conditions of use in developing countries do not match those that are assumed during risk assessment, uh, assessment of pesticides used for regulatory processes. HHPs require the use of personal protective equipment that is generally hot, uncomfortable, inadequate, expensive and or unavailable. For example, a pan-community monitoring project in Mali in 2010 found that only 2% of applicators were wearing internationally recognised PPE, 
but the level of poisoning amongst farmers spraying was 25%. According to the International Code of Conduct on Pesticide Management, pesticides that require PPE that is uncomfortable, expensive, or not readily available should not be used, especially in the case of small scale users and farm workers in developing countries and hot climates. Sorry. The simple reality is that the adequate personal protective equipment will never be available and worn by farmers under these circumstances. And the only solution to the problem of poisoning is actually to remove these HHPs from the, from the market. I want to turn now very briefly to environmental impacts. Pesticides leach into groundwater, wash into streams, of rivers in the marine environment. They drift and are carried to the Arctic, the Antarctic, the peaks of high mountains. They contaminate soil, water, air, rain, snow, ice, flora, fauna, and humans throughout the world. An example of the extent of this contamination, the UN's uh, Economic and Social Commission for Asia and the Pacific in 2002 said that in, in Thailand, an estimated 70% of applied pesticide is washed into or leaches into the soil and water, resulting in excessive contamination in the local ecology and food chain. This is not to point the finger at Thailand, this is probably the exact same uh, uh, outcome in every other country that is using pesticides. As a result of their widespread dispersal in the environment, pesticides have had a devastating impact on wildlife. They've been implicated in mass die-offs of marine mammals and birds and fish, and population crashes of, of amphibians and alligators. And just one example from America, the American uh, Bird Conservancy, Conservancy estimates that 67 million birds killed each year in the US alone from just 12 pesticides. So if we were fit to get those 12 pesticides off the market, that's 67 million birds that wouldn't be killed. HHPs also have a negative impact on excuse me, agricultural systems in which they're being used. The most obvious of these is the loss of beneficial insects and, and uh, pollinators. Um, but there are other less obvious negative impacts as well, including inhibition of nitrogen fixation, uh, new, uh, inhibition of nutrient recycling, and the loss of soil microbial life that is essential for plant nutrient uptake and actually underpins the integrity of the whole agricultural ecosystem. Recently, the Worldwide Integrated Assessment of Systemic uh, Insecticides drew attention to the effects of pesticides on the environment that are not looked for in regulatory risk assessment processes. They found that this group of pesticides, the systemic insecticides, are posing a global threat to biodiversity, including birds, bees, butterflies, uh, fish, and mammals. And this is because of a combination of these include soil, persistence in water, the toxicity, and the multiple routes of exposure. And these things all taken together have resulted in um, some very, very high levels of contamination in the environment and significant threats to aquatic and terrestrial ecosystems and to ecological um, food chains. I want to turn very briefly now to costs of inaction. Uh, there are numerous types of external costs associated with pesticide use, and this slide identifies just a very few of them. In Brazil, the costs associated with acute poisoning alone in just one state has been estimated at approximately 149 million US dollars per year. For each dollar spent on pesticide, the costs for acute poisoning alone was $1.28. In Thailand, the average external cost of pesticide use in horticulture has been estimated at 106, uh, 106 US dollars per hectare. And the UNEP Cost of Inaction Report estimated the accumulated health costs of health inju of injury to uh, small, small hold of pesticide uses in sub-Saharan Africa, by the, by the year we, time we get to the year 2020, will be in the vicinity of $97 billion, far outstripping the aid that they receive for, for um, health impacts such as for AIDS. Other costs include those of, of the effects of uh, pesticides rather than pests on crops and the losses resulting from those, uh, and the losses of pollinators and beneficials. In the US, a figure has been arrived at for um, a total external cost of pesticide use of $9.645 billion per year. And lastly, I just want to uh, refer to alternatives. 
there's a huge range of alternatives available for most, if not all, HHPs. And I use here an example of just one HHP, Indisolvent. Uh, when it was listed under the Stockholm Convention for Global Elimination, countries and observers provided a list of 98 other pesticides that were already in use, were already in use at that point, as replacements of Indisolvent. Although, admittedly, a number of these were HHPs. Uh, the OPOPS Review Committee, however, also provided a guidance document, 40-page guidance document, on a range of non-chemical alternatives to endosulfone, including ecosystem approaches to pest management. The subsequent conference of the parties to the convention recommended that countries give priority to ecosystem approaches to pest management when replacing endosulfone. And in this context, I would add that same recommendation should stand for replacing all HHPs. So this was a recommendation that was adopted by, agreed to by all um, countries present at the last conference of parties of the Stockholm Agreement. In conclusion, there is overwhelming evidence that HHPs are causing significant damage to human health and the environment and to farming systems, and that they can, cannot be used safely by small-scale users and farm workers in developing countries. There are alternatives available, but it is also recognised that farmers and governments need assistance in making a transition away from HHPs, and particularly to ecosystem approaches to pest management, as has been recommended. Uh, and uh, just before I finish, I'd like to um, uh, mention to you, in the context of, ban of phasing out highly hazardous pesticides, if when you leave the, the um, meeting today or tomorrow when you have time, you look at the booths over in the far corner, there's a pan booth there with a very long sideways poster called the Pan Consolidated List of Bans. This is information that we've pulled together showing that there are, at the moment, 314 currently used pesticides that have been banned by one or more country. And this is for 87 countries who have information. It's quite possible there are a lot more. And I just mentioned this, A, so that you can go and look and, and check out your country, but B, so that you get the idea that actually phasing out HHPs is not that hard. A lot of countries have already made a lot of progress on the way. Uh, and it was very important for putting that list together to see just how many. That didn't include any obsolete pesticides. That's currently used pesticides, 314 of them. Thank you.